What's up? Your host here, Sean Crawford of Varsity House Podcast. Thank you all for listening and watching. My goal and our goal here is to not only deliver inside access into these programs, but to shine light on the stories of these coaches, players, along with other personnel. Um, Do me a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Varsity House Podcast. Follow all of our social media accounts at Varsity House Podcast. And just continue to show support. We thank you and enjoy. All right, well, I appreciate y'all hopping on today. Um, I call Coach Freeman, text Myron, text Avery, and just said that I'm starting a podcast, um, just trying to get into that space. I just feel like with the connections that I have and relationships that I have, just um, going through college myself and playing sports, and then just also just our Notre Dame tree growing and spreading out um, just over these past years, I felt like it was it was time for um, these elite Division One athletes or just athletes in general to be able to share their stories, um, to be able to sit down with a coach, sit down with players and just have a normal conversation, not the, um, not the answers that you always get in the media, the correct answers, the ones that the fans want to hear or that sounds good, but just to, to talk real for us uh, for a couple of minutes. But I um, appreciate you guys coming on. This is um, Varsity House Podcast. We're going to run this through um, to the end of the school year. So a couple more sites on target, but um, thank you again for hopping on. This is Avery Davis, Myron, Coach Freeman. So thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> so dope. So first, we're going we gonna to get into um, talking about just the Notre Dame community, basically. I told you guys I sent out a text, made a call, and just like that, it was everyone was on board. Um, it was at first it was it was kind of just like oh I'll reach out I played there hopefully they'll hopefully they'll be willing to hop on but I mean you guys I was surprised myself just by how um, responsive you guys were and just um, how agree how agreeable you guys were and just how excited you guys were for me so um, just getting into it I know you just got here been here for a season and a half now um, how is like how have you felt the presence of Notre Dame community so far. It's strong. It's strong. And and I don't think until you get here, do you realize how strong this network, this community, this place is. And so, I mean, this is a great example, right? And that, you know, we're community. I never had a chance to coach you, but you were here. And I know the work you put in to get this place to where it's at, right? And every every former player, every current player, this is the reason why Notre Dame is is Notre Dame. And so um, this is such a powerful network. uh, It's a great place to be a part of. But, uh, uh, as, as for like network, um, I think it's special. It's kind of hitting on what, what you said on, on all areas. Is if you, you ever worse to need something, whether it be a conversation or whether it be advice or help on something, like there's somebody in that respective field. It's mm-hmm. somebody that you can reach out to. And they're always responsive. They're always open. That's just the love that comes from, I guess, being here and sharing an experience. And then as far as the football aspect, it just gets even deeper. The bond gets even tighter. And I think it's special. And I think that's why. As somebody like an alum or somebody that I was close with on the team hits me up, asks for a favor, anything I can do to help him, I'm there for sure. I think that's in the blood of me, but I think it's something that, you know, it's amongst everybody else that takes part at this university. Yeah, I think for me, my experience with the <clears throat> Notre Dame community kind of stepped in our freshman year, or my first, my, my very first walk. Um, obviously, as a freshman, you don't expect people to know who you are until, like, you're going throughout the walk and you're just taking everything in, and then all of a sudden, like, like as a freshman, like I said, you just hear your name being called by the fans, like, let's go. And they already have like nicknames for you. And it's like, damn, like this is different, you know? Like you never experienced like this kind of stuff back home. But um, yeah, coming out here, I think what makes Notre Dame Notre Dame, a big part of it is the community itself, the networks that you see uh, throughout Notre Dame. And um, that's one of the reasons I think uh, Notre Dame separates itself from a lot of other schools. It's just the people that you meet and the love that they bring to the table is, is some of the only experience at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. You talk about back home. People may not know you're from Hawaii. So is the presence, we talk about how big it is here, but is the presence <clears throat> um, still big out there? Notre Dame? Yeah. Big time. Um, my, coming out of high school, 
my senior year, we actually had like a Hawaii ND picnic. So okay. a lot of the North Dam alums who live out in Hawaii hosted a picnic. And I mean, the connections that you just make there already is phenomenal. I'm gonna have to come out to one of those so I can <laughs> rub bump elbows with somebody who got a nice villa in Hawaii. How about you from Texas? So, um, yeah. and I know it's, I mean, you got Texas, you got Texas A&M, yeah. all those type of schools. How was it? Um, how was it there? Yeah, I had no, no, uh, I don't know what word I should use. I, Notre Dame was not on my radar whatsoever until I started getting recruited by them. Uh, I didn't think of them. The only time I really like spoke of Notre Dame was on NCAA, the game. So <laughs> other than that, I, I didn't really associate myself with Notre Dame or anything like that until I started getting recruited by them. And that's when I started to learn about the school and the opportunities and things that uh, come with it. As, long, as well as how good the school is itself, you know. I already knew they was good at football. Like, you know of them, you know about Rudy, but you don't really know about him. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my experience. Because you're from Ohio State, so um, any, similar, any similar experience? I know, fo like, football, you got to mention Ohio State in, in terms of that, but as far as, like, the community and just, like, alumni and just, is that a tight-knit, um, like, community as well? Yeah, I think when you grow up in Ohio, right. um, you're almost raised to, to be an Ohio State fan. You know, my dad was from Columbus, Ohio. My mom's from Korea, so she didn't know anything. But mm -hmm. my dad kind of um, raised me to be an Ohio State fan. It is. It's a strong, um, it's a strong fan base, a strong network. But I think the unique thing about Notre Dame is that you can get a guy from Texas, two guys from Ohio, a guy from Hawaii, and we're all in one place. Whereas usually at some of the state schools, most of those guys are from the state. Right. You know, and I think that's what makes this place so unique is that you get guys all over the world. We got guys from Hawaii and, and Germany right. on this team and to get them to come here, connect even the, the students. Mm -hmm. We got students from all over this world. And I just think that's what makes this place unique because everybody has to get outside their comfort zone. Here. Right. Because nobody's really from here for the most part. And so that's what I think makes this place so strong is that you find a way to get people from all over the world, connect over a common place, right? And common values and, and you just build that strong connection and network. That's what makes this place special. Yeah, no, for sure. And we talk about just being able to grow and like use the resources around campus. And that was something that was huge for me, especially early in my career, just because I came here. See, I'm from I'm from Ohio as well, but I hated Ohio State. Like my, my dad was a, a Michigan fan growing up. So I never like Ohio State was just like, that's the one school. I didn't even take a visit because I just I was I knew that I wasn't going to Ohio State. So I was ended up like committing to Michigan, but then like um, Coach Kelly came, he took a visit, and just like that whole Notre Dame experience opened it back up, and came here for a camp on one day, and I did like a weekend trip. So I did Michigan on Friday just to like see like if I still loved it, I liked it. Then I came to Notre Dame, and it was just I was like I'm going to Notre Dame, and just from that like little because like I visited Michigan multiple times to uh, visit here twice. And just the feelings that I got when I came here, it, it didn't come close. And that was any time that I went to Michigan. So I just felt like this was the right place. This was the place to be. And being able to look back on it now, it was like, like while I was playing and might have had a couple injuries in the beginning, I was thinking like, dang, like, should I have came here? Like, would it have been any different if I went to a different school? Would the, like, would I have not been in that position to get hurt? Things like that. But then I started to think about like taking a step back to where, like, I'm, I'm able to do things like this because of Notre Dame. I was able to graduate um, with my bachelor's, get it, end up getting a master's from here as well, playing in multiple playoff games and doing all these things like that teams don't get to do. We were scheduled to go to Ireland. You're, they're going, you guys are going back to Ireland this year. So that's something that's some, that's just something that Notre Dame offers. And just like being able to think about that, it was like I 100% made the right decision. Although like those years that I was down and wasn't able to play, it wasn't ideal. And it maybe it could have been, it could have been the same at other places, at other universities. But I do know, know at other universities, when things go wrong and a kid is not on the field, they look to push people out at, at certain schools. And so me, in my situation, I was very fortunate to have um, Notre, the Notre Dame staff here, Coach Kelly, um, Coach Bayless, um, Rob Hunt and his team, just to like always continue to believe in me. And when it was when it was one setback, they always knew that that they that I was capable of coming back. And so that's just something special that I think Notre Dame offers that other universities might not even um, come close to. But that's just, hey, you, I know you had some experiences um, 
been through some things pretty similar to mine. Like you high, highly rated. I, you played in the Army game? Or? Yeah, on the All-American game. UA, oh, UA. The Under Armour. So I played in the Under Armour as well. So yeah. um, coming from that, it's like, okay, like I'm supposed to get in. I'm supposed to get in. I'm supposed to play. Yeah. But then it's just like things happen. It's like, all right, I'm going to play next year. It's like, oh, I'm going to play next year. Mine were injuries. Um, your story might be, your story is a little different yeah. if you don't mind sharing. Nah, so mine was more of position changes, which kind of was like a setback or it made me just start from ground zero over and over again. So um, I came in, highly recruited quarterback. I was uh, an elite 11 quarterback. Um, then I went to the Unarmed All American game as well. Uh, came in with aspirations of playing quarterback, full intention of playing quarterback. Things weren't really going my way the first year, I guess. And then, um, I guess things started to change, you know, and then I started to transition. So that spring, the 2018 spring, is when I started to transition a little bit. So I started playing receiver. And that was really weird. Like, just everything about it was weird because I had never done those movements. Yeah, I'm athletic on film. Like, my high school film, you would see me, like, score running touchdowns, make people miss and stuff. But that's all I had did in that regards. Like, it was everything I did down the field was through the quarterback position. So. Yeah, I was an athletic, but I didn't know certain movements. I didn't know how to run and stop. I didn't know how to break out of, uh, out of a route. I didn't know how to really catch the ball other than catching the snap, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, so all of that I had to learn. The learning curve is huge. Um, that wasn't going too well to the where. Actually, it was going pretty well. My 2018 year, I played a little bit. So I played the first game against Michigan. I played a lot of games, honestly, just sporadically, not as much as I wanted to. So um, following year, I don't know how this suggestion came up, but I think it's because you got hurt, honestly. Either you or somebody else got hurt. Somebody on defense got hurt. They were like, you're not producing or you're not doing the role you want. Would you be open to play defense? At that point, honestly, I, I had nothing to lose. I really felt like I wasn't going nowhere um, with football. So I was like, I might as well give it a shot. What do I got to lose? I don't want to close down an opportunity that like you know God might have for me. So I, I tried it. Uh, I sucked, to be honest. You know, it, was, <laughs> it was too too much of a learning curve. Like To play at this level, I'm going against guys that have been playing receiver forever you know they've been training for this they're here on scholarship they're the best of the best you know i'm lining up getting torched so it's like that was a, a mental barrier i had to get over but when i got the opportunity to come back on offense because it happened to be another injury which i think was just a part of the plan a part of the journey uh jafar got hurt he like pulled his groin or something and they moved me back to offense so and then the first game i get back on offense i scored the first play i, uh, I got the ball so i was like all right, I'm, I'm not going back to defense. Yeah, nah, I ain't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I ain't no, doing no, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go all in with this. And then from there, it just was baby steps day by day. You know, still taking losses. I wasn't good at that point. You know, I still couldn't run a good route. I still wasn't doing that. But it was like competing against guys like you, competing against guys like Alohi in the practice, you know, getting pushed. But like, I wanted to go against the best of Because I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm going against the scrubs. Like, this is not going to get me any better. I'll win by that just off of athleticism. I want to go against people that know what they're doing, who know how to do, uh, work leverage, who know how to, you know, pick uh, – apart routes and dissect things like that just because it made me better and then after time I just got better and better by the time my senior year came the COVID year uh I was starting so like I wanted to start a starting job that fall camp and I just started to feel like everything coming full circle um my fifth my fifth year which is last year I was playing really well it's probably definitely my best season in college playing really well um I can't remember I don't remember stats I don't buy into that but um I was doing well being optimistic thought the opportunity could come that I could potentially put myself in a position to be drafted or into the combine and give myself a chance to get drafted. And then I tore my ACL against um, Navy with non-contact, free injuries, kind of like other stuff that happened to me. It's like, I don't, I can't really explain how it happened or why it happened. You know, it was yeah, just, no, I know. It was just, it just, I just stepped. It was a step that I've taken up millions of times before. It wasn't an exaggerated step. I wasn't like, my body wasn't out of frame or anything like that. It was just a step and it, an ACL tore and that was it. So that set me back again. So now I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? And then that whole month, like every day I would ask myself, what am I doing? And I didn't have a question. I mean, I didn't have an answer for it, which is kind of foggy. You know, like I, I don't know, like I'm in a bad place. I can't move my leg. I just had surgery. Uh, stuff's going on. A couple of days after surgery, Coach Kelly just bounces. And I'm like, all right, so now I got, I got Chad hit me up. Like, you know, hey, we got this going. I'm like, yeah, he got my vote 100% on for it. I had already been around Coach Freeman, felt his energy. And I felt like the university needed to change. So, when he came to me with that, I'm like, oh, definitely, I'm on board with that. I definitely don't want somebody just coming in off the street, trying sure, to yeah. come in, bring their own new stuff or new coaching staff and completely shift. I wanted, I wanted some person that knew how special Notre Dame was, as you alluded to earlier, already, you know, that can just build off of that. Definitely, we need to bring in some other aspects. We need to refresh in this. We need to bring in more juice, more energy. But I'm saying all that to say I saw that, and I didn't know that that was going to happen, but it did happen, so I'm like, now I'm reconsidering coming back. At first, it, honestly, there was a point where I was contemplating not even playing anymore because I'm like, 
you get knocked down so many times, it's hard to keep getting back up. So I'm like, I, that's that was an option too. Then I felt the energy in the, uh, in the in the building, and it just felt different. I'm like, I want to be a part of this. You know, I got one more year. Why 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 look back on this in 30 years and be like, I had one more year. Why did I go for it? So I'm just gonna go all in. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, I'll be four months post surgery tomorrow. I feel like I'm in a good place, and I'm just ready for the excited for the season. I think it's gonna be a good season. So that was one of the things with me to where it was like like I keep getting knocked down. But like I felt like at some point I was like, all right, I, I got hurt. Like I got I got hurt my freshman year. I was playing well balling. Got hurt and this is like a team with like Will Fuller, Jalen Smith, and like I'm like, oh I wanna be out there with these dudes because like if I could play with them then it's like I know I, I know I know I'm that guy. Um so I ended up getting hurt, but like came back and we played Texas the following year at Texas and went like crazy. I'm talking about Top, like sports center like it was crazy <laughs> it was a, like a great experience i'm like okay like i went through that i'm back now like i'm like let's, let's go second game first home game like first quarter tear my achilles and it's like dang like like it's like that's when i started to like like think about dang like if what if, if i went somewhere else like should i go somewhere else like is it is it is it time like um do i still like have that like buzz to go somewhere else so it's like and i'm seeing like all the people that I played in an underground Under Armour game with, like Derwin James and like Mika and all these dudes, and it's like I played with these dudes, and these dudes, it's like they go on top ten next year. So it's like I'm like, dang, I'm like itching. But I I say that to like when like at the end of it, when I learned that um, for me to just have so many setbacks and me be able to just keep coming back, like it got to be a reason. Like it's not like I got set back and it's like oh, I couldn't do this no more, I can do that no more. It was like I was set, I got set back, and then I I found like a new hunger to come back, and then to try to dominate again. And it's like, oh, I got hurt again. And it was like, now nah, I'm proving to myself that like that was just that was just like a little like a little scratch. Like I'm gonna come back and do the same thing. And so just like that was just like my like that was my mindset every single time. It's like if God keep giving me the ability to come back and play at this level and compete at this level, then it's then it's meant to be. That's just all a part of the story. And like I said, that's why I'm. That's why I wanted to get all of us on here. Um, we are, we're all we all been captains here as well. So I just wanted to talk about like this. The people like these athletes that we cheer for and that we see on Saturdays like go through stuff. Like they they like they experience like hard things. And like they in college, he and he from Texas, he hours like miles away from home. So it's like he and this is what he's battling on his own. So it's like there are there are things that we go through and I don't think people like realize it or recognize it. They just all right, I want I want him to score I want him to score two touchdowns this weekend. It's like oh he dropped that pass. But it's like we we go through things and then we also come on the field and it's like that's life. Like Avery said, like like he been he been working for this his whole life. So he gonna he gonna continue to grow as hard as he can. And um I know my um also like you really far from home. You are from Hawaii, so I know it, it had to be things throughout college that, that might have been challenging for you as well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, starting off with last year, I was talking about Coach said, um, <clears throat> I lost my father early on last year before the season. Um, stuff like that, you don't really prepare for, obviously. Uh, it just came, and um, I wasn't really ready for that moment. Um, I remember just coming out of practice. Um, Coach Elson kind of had a sad face on, but he was telling me to make sure I give my family a call. And I just go, go in the locker room, put up my phone, and I just see I have like at least 50 missed calls, like from my brothers, my sister, my mom, all these people. And so I call them back, and the first thing my mom tells me is like, my dad passed away, and she, we're on FaceTime. And so like, I'm really emotional at this point. I think I was in the the lounge, the player lounge, and I started like flying the chairs around because I was so like, I was so sick to my stomach, you know? Like you never want to hear those words, like, it, like, and you don't even think about it until like it actually happens to you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like the only thing I could think of in that moment, I immediately just thought about my little brothers. Like who's gonna take care of my little brothers? Like my dad has been there for me, for my football process since I was four years old. And like now I'm thinking about I have three little brothers back home who haven't even uh, touched the, the college turf yet. And like, I'm just thinking so hard about like, who's gonna be helping these guys? Um, Cause I don't, my mom's didn't have a lot of things to deal with and stuff like that. But I think the biggest thing that I got out of that entire um, situation was just uh, cherish your time with your loved ones. I mean, it's so cliche, but man, it's so true that you have to cherish that time with your loved ones. Like, 
my relationship with my siblings and my mom has gotten so much better since then. And it's not like it was in a terrible place. It was just like realizing that time is just short, like time is of the essence. And like, if something like that happened to my father, like it really glued my family together back to one piece. And um, adversity like that, yeah, it definitely puts you in the corner, but I think it definitely makes you a stronger person. And I think you guys are can attest to that too, when you guys face adversity. Um, adversity, I believe, puts you in the corner and makes you, forces you to make a decision. And I think that decision is gonna be the, you know, the end all be all of our story. And like, see how you guys kept pushing on, how I kept pushing on, and even, you know, Coach Freeman's story about how he became head coach. And there's just so many, you know, things that we can talk about, but I think at the end of it all, um, it was the love of the people around me, the support of the, my, you know, social group that got me through all this. So, Coach, you experienced some setbacks in your playing career. Um, can you like express how that may maybe led to like the path that you're on now? Yeah, I, I think a lot of your failures help mold who you are. Or a lot of the, the tough times. I remember as a player like you are, we never played as much as we wanted, right? always everybody wanted to come in and start as a true freshman and have this great career three or four years and be the first round pick but you you never play as much as you want I remember those times my junior year and you know you're rotating and you want to blame the coaches and I never I had a roommate that was just like stop blaming the coaches and look at yourself and I'll never forget I'm like that's a true that's a true friend right instead of passing blame you gotta look within and realize there's different obstacles you gotta overcome injuries playing time Family deaths. I mean, it's tough. I remember I went to the NFL's uh, fifth round draft pick, and I was getting ready to. After three or four knee injuries, I was like, I'm, I'm ready to kind of move on. And I had a chance to go sign with the Indianapolis Colts. And so at that physical, they found an enlarged heart valve, and it was like almost like God was saying, "All right, enough with this. You got to move on to the next chapter." And so um, I did. And, and how many years later? Obviously, here where I am today, but. You look at all those players, you even have to coach as a coach. You know, I was at Purdue for four years. We won nine games in four years, which is not a lot. And so it was a lot of Saturday nights and Sundays that were difficult, but that helped mold me to be the man I am today. And so I think we, it's never easy to go through those difficult situations as you all have attested to, but that's who makes us who we are, right? Those situations build our character, man, and really define it. And it's so, cool for me exciting to see right i'm on the other end of it right but it's exciting to see you guys all avery's got another year here right as a captain here in notre dame it's great he gets to have one more season here and you're gonna you're on your journey nfl and you're there and it's like then what and it's gonna be really cool to see us progress as men as fathers as husbands and, and it's life man those obstacles build you make you who you are and so it's exciting to see for your future you're all Mm-hmm. As the the last few weeks of the bro prep, has that have you leaned on that experience a little bit going into this next year? Yeah, I tell these guys all the time: one day, one life, one play. Like move on. But you go grab my phone. My screensaver is a uh, it's a reminder from that bowl game. Mm-hmm. And so again, there's another another obstacle, right? You become the head coach in your first game is a loss. We're up 28 points in the second quarter. We find a way to lose that game. And so that's going to make this team better. Right, that's going to make me as a head coach better. And so you learn from all experiences, man. And usually those failures make you grow the most. But um, it's all about consist- consistently improving, consistently learning and uh, developing who you are. Mm-hmm. How's your role been? I know you're not you're not able to take the field as, as you plan, but um, this is still like a big time, especially for the young guys to get yeah. reps. So how, how have your role changed uh, this spring? Uh, so during practice, I'm not, I can't be around too much because I still have to work out, to stay in shape and stuff. But off the field aspect, I've been really trying to be like in their ear and especially in the film room or if I, uh, like Zoe, he always wants to hit me up and like watch film with me, um, later and stuff. But that's when I just try to pass down like the, the knowledge I got. I got knowledge from watching film as a quarterback. I got knowledge from watching film as a running back. I got knowledge from watching film as, from a defensive perspective. So mm-hmm. it's like my ability to look at film, I feel like it's different from, especially from a, for a young guy. So like I can sit there and break down and be like, okay, if he's right here, 
you can think of this as this might be a too high shell or he's right here he might be bluffing or they might be trying to work into this coverage tendencies things like that things that i know that as a freshman i didn't know you know right. stuff like that i just try to give the game back to them everything i can do right now is pretty much mental so i try to help them as much with that and then like on the sideline like i do catch all the team periods at the end of practice i'm always there and after that after every play i'm just kind of saying like what, what, what are you seeing or what are you feeling how'd you feel on that uh, uh, did did you react to this way, this way? And I try to go through every spot too. I'm not just trying to focus on the slot clicks. Like I said, like I, I still understand the game too. Uh, I feel like at a higher level than some of the younger guys. Um, so I just try to give that back, man. Just, and then encourage them as well. Uh, like coaching can be hard sometimes, not in the in a way like we're trying to they're trying to demean them or anything mm -hmm. like that. But it's hard. Like I need you to get I need to get this point across to you. But that's where like when we come in as as players or uh, supporting teammates to lift your brother back up and just be like, bro, you good? Just check this out. Make this adjustment right here on this play. You'd be better. You'd be better off. So yeah, this is pretty much it. I'm just trying to be more vocal in, in their ears. Just help them out when they need it. Check out the page and hit the YouTube channel and subscribe and comment. We're gonna be giving out some free cleats. Uh, game War Notre Dame edition cleats. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, comment, and then we'll, we'll get these right over to you. Yeah, Byron, your spring been a little different just because now you got the opportunity to, to go to the NFL. So you've yeah. been pretty much doing draft prep. You were uh, training out in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the draft prep was definitely different. I mean, coming back here and just seeing the place as it is, you know, I just love uh, it's weird walking back in knowing that that was after the bowl game. That was like my last time being in this building. And um, yeah, the draft prep's been going really well. Uh, I trained at Bomberitos, Florida. Shout out Bomberitos. <laughs> uh, great place to train at. Um, a lot of people there, including myself, I feel like peaked at the combine. And so I felt really well about that. Um, the journey itself has been one that uh, you really learn on the fly. Like you don't really know how to work like agents and like draft prep until you actually get there and um i think at the end of the day i think the biggest thing is uh it's been a blessing man mm -hmm. the entire ride um it's fortunate enough to be able to get that combine invite and so that experience alone was something that uh you can only dream about and then you're there and it's like it's all here for you yeah is there anything you can like avery gonna be in that position next year so is there anything you would like if there was one thing that you wish you knew more about, like you talked about agents or just mm -hmm. you learned another line and things like that. If is there one thing you would want to tell Avery? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for you, Avery, is that when you go through this process, just I mean, you're gonna hear this a lot. Like, understand that these agents work for you. Like, they work for you. Don't make it. Don't make it them make it seem like it's brother, buddy, buddy. Like, oh, it's you here, agent. Here. <laughs> make that clear, like. They, you're paying him yeah and so you have to like carry that mindset and i know you'd be good yeah. um i think for me like one of the hardest things for me was telling people no right like i'm such a nice guy like i always have like agents before like even when meeting with agents i told every agent that hit me up like yeah like, i'll be with you but i didn't realize like man my schedule just got busier and busier mm -hmm. and it's like i gotta start cracking down on like who i want and um i think the biggest thing is like um, speed yourself through it all the people that remain themselves to throughout the entire process come out on top i believe so and i know one of the biggest things is like tra like training and like how like this, the whole schedule mm -hmm. whereas like you see guys who maybe come from a different program and they can't like follow the schedule they're not used to like training two times a day or like yeah. going like going hard because like this is not this that's not what they're accustomed to from the college mm -hmm. life and so me going through it and uh, Myra could probably talk about it too, but having Coach Bayless, Coach Bayless is our strength coach. Um, so having him just like that's like that's your foundation. Yeah. So it's like I found myself sometimes like going to train and it's like, oh like this is it? Like that's yeah. the workout over. Exactly. And like that's that's what it is, like once you leave here, but like I feel like why you here, like that's that's like that's that's the structure that you need to where mm -hmm. it's like yeah. You got to be like you got when if the lift is at 8 a.m., then you got to be here at 750, like waiting. You got to be weighed in, things like that. You got to be like fed because like it's on you if you come to the weight room and you're not prepared to to, to train like to the max because you're going to be pushed to the max every single time. Yeah. And so um, just having like that, that that as a foundation and having Coach Bayless and his staff like here pushing you, it's like you see that you're like already like steps ahead yeah. of other people in your class or other people that you may be playing against week in and week out. And 
that kind of, like just knowing that from like from my experience it was like dang like what we did wasn't crazy like or i guess it is crazy <laughs> like, it, it's a little crazy <laughs> the fact that it is a little crazy because like not everybody working like that but we know that we're doing something right and that in any time that we come up short of a national championship it's like there's there's still another level we can we can mm -hmm. get to and i think that's important especially because coach bayless came in my first his first year was after the four and eight so it, it changed the, the whole program around and so when he came in it was like workouts at like like 6 a.m like everybody everybody's in there like you're not like you late you got to do like 200 up downs and like you got to like and then we had these SWAT teams he built like he built these SWAT teams which I think was was a beautiful idea just because it allowed you to hold your teammate accountable and it was proof instead of like a player getting on hey you're not working hard you're not working hard it was proof it was like if you didn't go to class like minus points and now if you get minus points personally then your team is hurting and then if like if your team ends up being last and it's like you got extra workouts during the week before the first morning workout which is at like 5 30 so like you like it, it like it like it held you accountable and like you needed that there were there were times i would go to class science lit beautiful class I mean, they probably don't even have it no more but <laughs> science we go to science lit and it's like i'm like hurting like i'm 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 just i'm in there like knocked out but it's like <laughs> Cause, cause these workouts were like there was, there was different. It was like a shock to your body, and it was like the shock that we needed. We talk about like that's what set this program up to be where it is today. And so having things like that, like in place, is, I mean, that's just that's again, that's just a part of the, what what Notre Dame can offer. But um, yeah, Mario, you said you said you wanted to mention something. Yeah, I think going off your point, yeah, I think the foundational makeup that Coach Bayless and his staff uh, brings out of each and every one of us as we leave to the draft. Um, it applies. And I think um, going throughout my training at Bomberitos and thinking of my training here, nothing compares to Coach Bayless. <laughs> like, let's make that clear. Like nothing compares to Coach Bayless. And I think what um, kind of shocked me the most throughout the draft prep was just realizing how much harder this guy is than like draft prep. And uh, it really just shows because like even going on the field doing like our five ten five work L cone drills, like we worked that with Coach Bayless. Mm -hmm. And so like. As soon as I got out there and we're working it, like, you got some of the trainers telling me, like, damn, like, you guys are kind of ahead of this. Like, oh, he's telling me, like, you guys are ahead of this. I'm like, nah, like, we just work this all the time. Like, this is normal. Like, y'all don't work this? Like, like, and so, like, we're far ahead of, like, the other guys that I was training with. And it's, like, it's no shots to the other guys, but it's a huge, like, compliment and shout out to Coach Bayless, you know, what he's been doing with this program. And I feel like every year as, you know, Notre Dame guys enter the draft, you see the, these numbers, like, Every guy produces the numbers that they want, and I think a lot of that starts from Coach Bayless and his program. Yeah, so we so coming off this season, like like you said, we we fell short in the bowl game. What was like the message to the team when you got back? You know, it's ultimately about preparation. In every day, man, we're preparing one way or another. I don't care if it's a day we have off, right? And that. We got to understand, you have to, every once in a while, we can peek up and look at what we're preparing for. Mm -hmm. We got 12 guaranteed opportunities to go out there and play, right? But it's the preparation and the work that's intentional. And you guys have mentioned, I believe we got the best in the business, man. And Bayless does such a, an unbelievable job, not just physically, but mentally, you know, building these guys to, to take on all challenges. Some of those theme lifts, I mean, I almost feel bad for the guys yeah. sometimes, you know what I mean? But <laughs> to be making up, making up holidays. <laughs> no, no. Valentine's massacre. We're not supposed, yeah. not supposed to be doing that on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Shout love. love. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's it, man. That's what makes him different. That's what makes his place different. And, uh, you know, I lean on him heavily. You know, he carries out our culture, man. And, mm -hmm. and it's built in that weight room. It's built on what Coach Bayless and his staff does with these guys, man. He, he creates a brotherhood, but also a group that is just mentally tough and has pushed to the limits, past the limits, sometimes they even understand. And so what a, a huge shout out credit to, to Coach Bayless and, and his staff, man, for what they do for our football program. Mm -hmm. You talk about the, the foundation. I, just, I saw you brought a lot of like Ohio State coaches over. Um, how, how has that transition been for them to where it's like, they're implementing some some things that Ohio State has done because Ohio State's a great program. We all know that. 
So how is like how is like mixing them in with this culture? How's that been so far? Yeah, we end up hiring six, seven new coaches, mm -hmm. and you know we wanted to keep some consistency, um, but some guys have some great opportunities, right. you know, to go and be coordinators and go to other places. And so the one guy we did bring was Al Washington, our D line coach, mm -hmm. you know, and so I coached with Al Washington um, at Cincinnati. Okay, and. Um, he was our D-line coach my first year when I was a coordinator there, and he went off to Michigan and Ohio State. And, um, what a great just person, football coach, recruiter, just man. Um, and so I knew the special group of defensive line we had here, mm -hmm. you know. And so when I had the chance to bring out here, it was without hesitation. But you got you got guys from all over, from Elam coach from Indiana, got a guy from Baylor, a guy from West Virginia. Uh, Al Golden comes from the NFL. Ryan Mason comes from Cincinnati, and so. You still have to be very clear on the culture and standards you want here, right? And right, and that hey, nothing is more important. You, know, I'll say it in every team: nothing is more important than Notre Dame. Nothing is more important than this Notre Dame football team. And mm -hmm. So, everybody has to put their individual goals and aspects aside because with team success comes individual success. Right. And so, every coach, every player, every staff member has to be aligned with what we feel is best for the University of Notre Dame. They've been great. I'm so excited, man. This staff is, is a tremendous staff, great people. Um, and then this group of players, you know, we got a great group. And I'm just excited. We're in practice. We just finished practice fourth. Mm -hmm. you know? And so we still have 11 left. And uh, I'm just excited to continue to just get better. That preparation, just get better. Just get better. Because ultimately, when we get ready to play that first game, how can we be as close to a maximum level, right? There's a level that you can get to, mm -hmm. right, as a, as a team. How can we make sure we prepare to be as close as that level as we can? And then go play. Right. And then go, go play, you know, but it's the preparation that matters. Shows how old I am. I had d -Land recruit me uh, out of high school, and I had Al Golden recruit me to Miami. Oh, yeah. Out of high school. So, where was uh, D-Land? He was at uh, yeah, I think he USC? Was at, uh, I'm not sure, but I, I forget. Yeah, I forget. it was a long time ago that I was getting recruited. But uh, yeah, so how like now like now you I mean you're heavy into recruit uh, recruiting for sure. Um, we've gotten some good like good signees. How has like recruiting changed? I guess like from your time, just how like just how it has changed from just my time a little bit ago. But how is how has it changed um, from when you were getting recruited to Ohio State? Yeah, when I was getting recruited, it was like look, a coach might call you your junior senior year once a week, and you know you go visit and kind of. We'll give you the spill and go from there. Now it's constant communication. It's mm -hmm. every day. It's making sure you build the relationship with the guys. And the unique thing about this place is I truly feel you can really, really sell something different, mm -hmm. right? And that, that we can truly sell the football excellence. Like we're not going to cut it short on football excellence. We're, we're, we're competing for national championships and we're trying to produce first round NFL draft picks, right? And that's what everybody wants in high school. Those big time football players, all three of you guys, they want that. But we also have insurance. Meaning that whenever the game is done, we have what we call the four for forty. This degree that is truly as strong as any degree in the country, mm -hmm. any degree in the world. And so, when you combine them both, I, I just believe that we have something to offer young people that nowhere else, nowhere else in the country can. And so that's why I love recruiting. I love selling this place because I firmly believe in what it can offer for the future of young people. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we talk about it all the time. It's like we also have the opportunity to play across the country, um, like I said, going to Ireland as well. But we traveled to California once. We, I've, I've been to Miami, we've been to San Diego, Texas, like playing in all these different places that like if you were just <clears throat> stuck in a conference, it's like that's just like your region. And then maybe for the bowl game or that first game of the year, you can travel somewhere and play in like Atlanta or all of all those other things. But it's like, what kind of sold me was, um, I just, I believed in the talent that I had. So it was like, we put Notre Dame on TV every single weekend. So it's like, I want to be seen. So <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna go to Notre Dame for sure. And then like the 4 for 40 speaks for itself. Um, just the opportunities that that, that, that uh, present. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it's it's been a it's been a journey for like, like all of us. And so um, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just get everybody here, talk about this a little bit, but um we got some we got some questions that we're gonna that i just want to ask real quick be easy questions to answer but 
So before the show, we were talking about like just questions we might have gotten from reporters or things like that that just might have sounded funny at the time and um, didn't quite know how to answer it. So do you remember like one um, specific question that you got like during your career or pretty much anywhere um, that was just like outrageous? No, I can't really remember. I remember questions used to make me uncomfortable last season when they would talk about or they would frame a question in a way to where I would have to pick a quarterback that I preferred other. That was around the time we were had we were rotating three guys. I was like, I answered it well. I felt like I answered it well, but those type of I don't like how the media would try to put me in an uncomfortable position like that. I'm sure I've gotten asked wild questions, yeah. especially like when I was transitioning to different positions and stuff. I just can't really remember. How about you? I know you went to the, you were at the combine, so yeah. saw, those videos always come out of. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get I didn't get any. Um, Odd questions, but there's a question that always comes up that I like to address. I am related to Tua, <laughs> so please stop asking that question. <laughs> That's it. How about you? I know you probably get like you have to be professional, and yeah. you know you're speaking for millions. So, um, can you speak on any questions? I was just like a head scratcher, maybe. Oh, I don't. I mean, it was funny when you brought up the combine. I remember when I was at the combine and. I had this coach, man, that's just trying to push you to see it till you, you just broke. You know, and the first thing he asked me is me and who was that a guy on our staff now was was a teammate of mine, James Ornitis, who was a great linebacker at Ohio State. And I remember him saying, Why should I draft him over you or who should I draft first? And I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I wanna say me, but I don't wanna dog my teammate. <laughs> yeah. And then he just started going at me, man. And, and they're just trying to get you to your breaking point. But um you know, I was able to keep my cool, but you know, the reporter's gonna ask questions, man. And, and the biggest thing, what, what, as the head coach, is you continue to make sure is that you protect your team, mm-hmm. right? And that you can be as honest you can with reporters, but you always protect this team, and that you all don't let anybody divide this team, man. And just like you're saying, make them pick a quarterback. No, it's about team, man. It's about whoever you have power to make sure we do what's best for this team. And so. Uh, I'm sure it's just getting started for me. You know, I'm sure yeah. next year when we do this or, or the next time we do this, I'll have a good question for you. That, that yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be answering a lot. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so we got, I mean, we got Ohio State on the schedule week one. I think that's a, I mean, obviously a huge game for the program. We don't, we don't play them often, but um, I'm going to be very excited just being from Ohio. I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to be cheering hard and, and um, just like, setting the standard that this is this is Notre Dame's gear that we're gonna come over and take over the shoe but um how's that preparation been so far like have you already like implemented some of the things they do um in spring practices or not really yet not yet mm-hmm. right now we're just trying to figure out who the heck we are right right and and you know coach Reese and the offensive staff well, offensive you know system has been here you know but we're still enhancing it right, right. he's teaching some new coaches the system and how do we enhance defensively um you know, Coach Golden's kind of brought some things over and, and we're doing some different things defensively. But right now it's about building this team, mm-hmm. you know, and, and every once in a while we'll take a peek. You know, we know who we play in week one, but again, we'll get to Ohio State when that, that gets closer. Right now it's about preparing every day, man, getting better every day as a team. And uh, when that week comes, I'm sure they'll be ready to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to do any. I'll, I'll take care of all the trash <laughs> no, and all that stuff. So you, I'll, you, I'll leave that up to me. I'll take I care to, of that. I get to tweet during the game. For the first yeah, time. yeah, that's a, that's that's different. So it's like like now. I mean, like obviously you'll play on Sundays and you'll be traveling, but you'll be able to you'll still be able to catch games. Yeah. And you haven't been in that position yet to where it's weird. Like I was in that position last year to like watch games. I was fortunate enough to come to some games too, but it's like. It's like different because it's like I'm 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 a fan now, but I feel like I'm more than like I'm, I'm like in between. Like I'm not a player, but I'm not a fan, but I'm like more than a fan. So it's like I want to see like I want to know to play. I want to know what's going. on. I want to know where he's supposed to be, but I also want to like cheer and just like have fun while watching it. So it's it's like a tough position to be in. And like my I mean Myra, you gonna find out, but it's it's tough. And I mean, Avery, you can talk about it too, like. Yeah, you had to watch it. from the from the silent towards the end of the year. Yeah. So it's like when you may see the offense struggle, or you may see um, someone in like for you, and it's like, dang, like I wish I was out there. Like, hundred percent. Even like uh, the Stanford game, I kind of feel how you were feeling. Uh, I'm watching it through like a laptop because like I didn't even have Wi-Fi set up in my place at the time. But I'm watching it through a laptop on my a hotspot. I'm like, this is super weird. <laughs> I'm seeing 
I don't watch the TV copies of the game, so I don't know how it looks. So that was my first time like watching another Notre Dame game since before I came to college. I'm watching, I'm like, this is super strange. Like you hear, it's just a different perspective. And I understand it kind of give me perspective on, on how it is to be a fan because like all they know is what the commentators say or how they present the game and stuff like that. But me, so like the commentator would be like, oh, he missed this here. But I'm like, nah, he didn't miss this. I know the read on this play. I know we're supposed to go with the ball. Like, nah, he's doing the right thing. But stuff like that, <laughs> just miss the screw. And, and it, it frustrates me. So like, I, I didn't really enjoy it, especially because I was still in the space where like, I felt like I sh I'm playing or right. I should be playing. So like, I, don't, I didn't like the fan aspect. I'm not ready for that yet. But um, I definitely see how the fans can get caught up into that and how much power the commentators have over the game and how they view the game. Yeah, yeah no. And Ma, you got pro day tomorrow. Um, any numbers you looking to improve on? I mean, you had a you had a great combine mm -hmm. from what I saw um, and just from what I've read. So um, tomorrow, obviously, you can you're going out there and you're working out, correct? Yeah. So like, is there any uh, specific numbers you're looking to improve on? Yeah, um, I'm still debating on the forty right now, but uh, <clears throat> tell them your forty time. Tell them how fast you are. All right, four eight one official laser combine laser. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, I didn't do the L or the shuttle because I got sidelined with the linebacker drills at the combine. So mm. don't watch the linebacker drills. <laughs> 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 no, I'm playing, but uh, um, I definitely want to hit like uh, sub four three mm -hmm. seven seven two seven one for the L, and uh, yeah, and try to hit a. 21, 22 for bench. Ooh. So did you bench at the combine? No, I did not. Okay, so 21, 22. Yeah. 21, 22. So you you heard it here first. <laughs> well, I'll be I'll be there tomorrow and I'll be screaming 21, 22, <laughs> 22. <laughs> but uh, nah, I'm excited. Like we talked about, we got pro day tomorrow. Um, I know coach, some guys, some pre, um, alum reached out to you about coming in and, and being able to work out just because they had the COVID year, so they didn't get a pro day. Um, I know you're big on just bringing alum back and just like continuing to build build the community. Um, how how did that conversation go? Yeah, it's unique with, with certain guys, as you said, that didn't get a chance to have their pro day or it was during the COVID year and they didn't really get the opportunity they wanted. So, you know, it was a unique situation. Um, but this it's another example of as me as a head coach understanding this is this is built by the former players, the current players and former players, and that you know. This is always going to be home to the people that stepped into this place and, and been a part of this team. And so anytime you got a chance to bring back former players to show your current players, man, this is this is the past, man. It's not it's not only about guys participating in pro day, but just former players that were here. It can be 80s, 90s, whatever. You know, I want to bring those guys back because there's power, man. There's power in seeing people that have done it before you. And so we're just going to make this a family, man. Mm -hmm. And uh I think when you have that ownership of this place and you know that others came before you, it makes you appreciate this. This is a privilege. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to coach here. It's a privilege to play here and go to school here. So I'll make sure our players understand it. Right, right, right. So we're about to wrap it up, but um, I guess one final question is I like to, since we're just like outside of what we normally do, outside of coaching, outside of playing, um, like this kind of this idea when I was just like at home, like thinking about it, it kind of like brought up an idea of like, what what do you want to do outside of football? What do you want to do after football? So um, we're, Myron, you're, you're entering into, into the NFL and the biggest thing to where it's like, for me that I learned was that there is no guaranteed spot to where it's like in college, like if you come in as a freshman, come in as a rookie, it's, you could do whatever you're going to be on it. You're going to have a jersey. You're going to have a locker. You're going to have food like you like you're going to be a part of the team no matter what um, that entire year to where it's like an NFL is different. Like you got to come in and you got to like take a job mm -hmm. from someone else. So it's like or um, someone's trying to come take the job from you. So just like not having that like stability and not having that, um, I guess, like comfort to know that like. I'm a um, I'm a be here like I'm a, like I know what I'm doing for the next four years or next five years and every mm -hmm. our our um shit, our our plan it was the next six years so <laughs> it was so I okay kind of it kind of like it was oh yeah I'll just go back to school and it's like oh I'll just go back to school so like I never really like thought about like what 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 what's my plan like after football or football doesn't work out and so um, this is just like one of the pieces of things I just wanted to tap into right here but. <clears throat> Um, obviously we know like you, your, your plan A is football, plan A football, but 
have you thought about like any other career path that you might want to take that you or that you like have interest in uh a, a specific career path no but i, I know that um that I know what I like to do, so mm -hmm. I, I definitely would like to be. If I was just removing football right now, I was I would want to be in the athletic space. Not necessarily; it doesn't have to be football. Right. I don't know if it would be coaching, but it would be maybe like if I wanted to work for like an Armour or a Nike or something like that, or or the music aspect. I'm just so behind the curve on music, but like I like I want to be in the creative space. I want to be able to come up with new ideas, whether it be a design for something or how can we make this better, stuff like that. So. That's where I'm at right now. I haven't really looked into it, but I know like once I tap into like a, a Notre Dame network, you know what I'm saying? Get going, <clears throat> I will find what the actual opportunity is and be able to apply mm -hmm. what I like, what I want to do to that. So I haven't thought too much what exactly I want to do because I'm really all in with this right now. But yeah, but yeah, I definitely I had to put thought into it because I, I got put in a position to, to like, am I gonna play again or am I done with this? So yeah, I definitely been putting a lot of thought into it. You said like Under Armour, so you talking about you want to work on a creative side? Creative side, like yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not into the numbers and stuff. I thought I loved math until I got to the school and realized I don't like math. So uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to be on none of the analytics, stuff, none of the none yeah. of that type of stuff. But I would love to be on a creative design, whether it be like a, a marketing program to, or, or like a, a push for a certain ad or, or whatever they got going on for this season, this this season of whatever sport they got going. Like I, I like to do stuff like that. Gotcha. How about you, Ma? I'm kind of like in the same space as Avery. Um, football has always been something that's been a part of my life. So like I don't think anything outside of football, but um, if I had to choose today, I definitely want to be able to coach. I love this game. Um, I think I realized that one summer when we we're working the camp over here, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun coaching. Like it was weird. Like I remember it was like a self like reflection after that day. I remember I was like, "Dang, I actually can see myself coaching." Cause like that day was fun. I'm only like 20 years old coaching over there, so like I'm 22 now. But um, yeah, I definitely can see myself coaching. Uh, after football ends, but I definitely love music. Music has been a part of my life since baby days. Uh, my mom forced me to play piano at a very young age, and I, that's a, a trait and a skill that I just fell in love with. And then I picked up a guitar when I got over here, and I mean, you know, like people on the island just love music, <laughs> yeah. so I can just jam and play a little bit. Coach, any experiences that led you, um, that you can remember that led you like to become a coach? Yeah, I, I didn't want to coach. First, I wanted to be an athletic director. And so I actually, my fifth year I did, I graduated and did a GA deal with our athletic department um, at Ohio State. But then, you know, right when the game got cut short, you just, I didn't, I wasn't ready to step away from it. So I was like, all right, let me try this GA thing. So, you know, I just developed a passion for young people and seeing people reach their goals. like. I got into it probably because I was like, hey, you're around football, you're on the sidelines. Like, I know coaches can make good money. But then you just developed a strong passion, man, for seeing young people reach their goals. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't a coach, then it could be a teacher. Like, it's something that you put, when you work at something, you see young people reach their goals. Man, that's what gives me, you know, my fulfillment. And so that's what I was destined but I also thought I might be a firefighter because I love team man <laughs> I love being a part of a team and working together with a group of guys man to reach a goal and so I also thought about that but you know I guess I'll take being the head coach of Notre Dame man I'm being a firefighter yeah. right now man yeah, it might be a little bit <laughs> different colors but yeah. I mean <laughs> but nah it was for me I always wanted to be like a lawyer just because I loved uh, but I'm not doing that I was that's Way too much school. I, I didn't because it looked cool on TV, like Law and Order, How to Get How to Get Away with Murder, those type of stuff. Like those are those are the shows that I love. I love the crime shows, cr Criminal Minds, and all that. So I'm like, dang, I want I want to be like a lawyer or just like a crime scene investigator. But then I, yeah, that, that, that was like, oh, I'm not I'm not doing all that reading. I'm not going to that much class. But if they had like a, a shortcut for you to, I might I, I low key want to get my pilot license, just because I feel like. I want like if like if I want to go somewhere, I just want to be able to like how I get in the car and go somewhere. Fly. I just want to just fly and get there. So it's and it's like not that like it's actually not that hard to get one. So um, I'm actually looking to the, looking into that and just having like my own little prop plane. So yeah, until you got to land it. No, like, <laughs> like now. I yeah. can't even land it. Yeah, but no, we'll plan it. I'll plan it out and all that. But um, again, like I appreciate you guys coming on today. Um, this is just the first episode. Uh, many more to come. Varsity House Podcast. Um, please tune in, um, subscribe to YouTube and comment. Thank you, guys. I just appreciate 
those guys coming in, um, helping me out, um, helping me get started up, something that I want to do personally, um, be able to just share the stories of um, these athletes and these coaches and just any personnel that's involved in this space. So um, be sure to just subscribe, comment, um, tune in. We got other schools. We, we hit the road, um, taking a little tour, just talking to some different schools and university, different coaches and players. So continue to tap in with us um, and we'll be back.